Hi, thanks for joining me as we begin our discussion about acids and bases. There are three broad classifications of acids and bases. Um, each one that I'm going to go through becomes more inclusive in its definition of what is considered an acid and or a base. Now, um, there, this is such a critical a unit of study in chemistry, in my opinion, because so much of our world is dependent upon acidity or basicity. Another word for a basic solution is an alkaline solution. All right, and this is just all around us, and so I think it's very important um, to understand. Like, for example, one of the hot things now is to drink alkaline water or basic water. So I think it would be helpful for you to understand what we're talking about. Uh, the Arrhenius theory is, is the simplest theory of all, and I'll be honest, if you're in my class, I tend to avoid questions about the Arrhenius theory because I just don't think it's very helpful. I think it's a theory that has seen its day. Unfortunately, standardized tests love to talk about um, the Arrhenius theory. And the Arrhenius theory is all about dissociating to form. So an acid is a substance that forms the H plus ion, dissociates to form the H plus ion. We're going to use that as a symbolic synonym for H3O plus. H3O plus is called the hydronium ion. H plus is called a proton. It's the hydronium ion that exists in reality, but you're going to see it um, written as an H plus very regularly. So you need to be familiar with both. And so in this case, to dissociate means to split into ions, cation and anion to split into ions. And so in this case, we have nitric acid dissociating to form H plus and NO3 minus. Now that's the shortcut way of writing it. The more accurate way of writing it is to show that H plus as being bonded to a water molecule, right? So you'll see both. A base in Arrhenius theory is a substance that dissociates to form the hydroxide ion. I've seen this defined in ways that make it very difficult to distinguish Arrhenius from our next theory, which is called the Bronsted-Lowry theory. Um, so I'm going to focus on that hydroxide ion and an Arrhenius base would have that hydroxide ion explicitly in its formula. Okay. Again, I just don't think this is the most helpful definition, but because of standardized testing, it's important that you understand it. A uh, far more important definition is our Bronsted-Lowry theory. Um, in the Bronsted-Lowry theory, we talk about acids and bases as having drives, a drive to either donate a proton or to accept. So we're going to talk about these in terms of donating the proton to another species or having a drive to accept that proton. Okay. Now, before we quite get into that, I do want to talk about strength of acids and bases. Strong acids and bases dissociate or react, in this case, 100%. So, for example, hydrochloric acid reacts with water and goes effectively 100% to form H3O+. Plus plus Cl minus, okay? So in this case, the HCl donated that H plus to the water to form that hydronium ion, okay? Now, if it's weak, it goes less than 100%. So for example, HClO plus water 
doesn't go 100%, so we're going to use a double arrow, forwards and back. Sometimes you'll see those as full arrows. I tend to write them as half arrows. I would get CLO minus plus H3O plus. So on weak acid, most of the acids stay as the HClO, the molecular form, and a little bit of it dissociates or reacts with water to form ClO minus and H3O plus in this case. The key here is that double arrow. Okay, we'll use a single arrow for strong and a double arrow for weak. So in Bronsted-Lowry, now that we've talked about strength, an acid is a substance that donates a proton to either water or to another substance that's present. Okay, so in this case, the HCl donated the um, H plus to the water. And so it's considered a Bronsted-Lowry acid, right? We're going to call this a conjugate base. So if HCl is the acid, when it's done with its donation, it has a conjugate base. More on that later, okay? Now, a base is the substance that accepts, has a drive to accept a proton. Note here, I put a double arrow because ammonia is a weak base, but it will accept a proton from water, so it's going to accept an H and a plus, so it became the ammonium ion. So it's really common for students to mix these up. So ammonia is neutral with three. The ammonium ion has four H's and a plus charge. Okay, so NH3 accepts the H plus. It is a Bronsted-Lowry base. And when it's done, it forms what we're going to call a conjugate acid. It's partner acid. All right, so that's the very basics of basics. I guess I shouldn't use that word. That's the, the heart of the Bronsted Lowry theory. Now, there's one more theory to talk about, and it's you know at the definition level for many 10th grade students, but certainly advanced chemistry sh students should know this one well. Now, in this case, what we're talking about, instead of the H+, plus, we're talking about electron pair. So a substance has an extra non-bonded pair of electrons. Okay? So an acid in this case is the acceptor of that electron pair, and the base donates the electron pair. Okay, so in this case, you've got ammonia with its extra pair of electrons that it can donate to BF3, which is, you know, got a, a deficient octet, so it's willing to accept that pair. And we're going to make what's called in this case a coordinate covalent bond. And the reason it has a special name is because in a normal covalent bond, one substance donates one electron, the other substance donates the extra electron, the other electron. In this case, both electrons are donated by one single substance. Okay? So that is our three theories. And if you look at these in, in terms of inclusivity, you've got Arrhenius. Everything that's an Arrhenius is also a Bronsted-Lowry, but not vice versa. So you can think of Arrhenius as a subset 
of Bronsted Lowry. And then our broadest category are the Lewis acids and bases. And they incorporate quite a few compounds that you would not normally consider to be acids and bases. So we're going to focus on this subset for the rest of my conversations about acids and bases. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate your time.